Today is October 24th, 2024, and I'm sending out a special shout out to my good friend Joel and his favorite basketball player in the entire world, downtown Jalen Brown, who both, not coincidentally, share October 24th is their birthday. So happy birthday, downtown Jalen Brown. And I know you are probably on top of the world right now. I mean, last year you got your finals championship, NBA championship with the Boston Celtics. You're the finals MVP, and you're now entering the second year of a five-year contract extension worth a measly $303.7 million. And so you got a lot of money, you got the championship, you got the MVP, you know, what else could you have? Well, I want to tell you what else you can have. You can have eternal life in heaven. Because the sad part is, if you got all this stuff going for you, that's great. But when you die, there, there'll be a come a time when you don't have all those things. And you'll end up going on to meet your maker. And then what are you going to do then? Well, the Bible says that Jesus said that if your righteousness does not exceed the, the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's quite a statement because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious leaders of the time. And they were considered the, the most righteous people there. And what Jesus was trying to say is that no matter how hard you work to try to make it into heaven, you can't do it on your own. The problem is that God is a holy God, which means He is perfect. And if you have some sin in your life and you meet Him, well, then you will mar His holiness. And so you can't be in the presence of a holy God with sin on your life. And the sad situation is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So no matter how hard we try, no matter how good of a person we are, you may be great in basketball and you can win your NBA championship and your finals MVP and have all the money in the world or have whatever you want in this world, but it you still cannot overcome the sin problem. All of us have sinned. No matter how good you are, no matter how hard you try, all of us have sinned. And so Jesus takes the most perfect people in the world at that time, these religious leaders, and says, if your righteousness isn't better than theirs, you can't make it into heaven. And the disciples ask later on, well, who then can be saved? You know, if the most righteous people can't make it in, how can anybody make it into heaven? And the answer is, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there's good news. Because God loves us so much, He knew that we couldn't work our way into heaven. And so He sent His own Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He came down into this earth. He was born of a virgin, so He did not have a sin nature. He chose to live a complete sin-free life, something none of us can do, no matter how hard we try. But because he didn't have a sin nature, he was able to live that perfect, complete, sinless life. The Bible says Christ did no sin. And then in the ultimate act of love, God put our sin upon Jesus on that cross. And then when Jesus then paid for that sin, and he come out of the grave three days later, and he rose from the dead showing that he had the, the power over death and hell. He says, I have the keys of hell and death in my hand. And that's what separates Jesus from anybody else out there. You take all the revered religious leaders, no matter what religion, whatever they are, it doesn't matter. None of them have on their own power raised from the dead. Because all of us have to go to the grave and because of our sin we stay there but Jesus didn't stay there he rose from the dead and the Bible says when we trust that Jesus died was buried and rose again to pay for our sins then we have the gift of eternal life it's a free gift we can't work our way to heaven because no one can be perfect no matter how hard we try you may sin less than somebody else but you're still going to sin, you're still going to mess up. And God loves us so much, He understood that, that He sent His Son Jesus, who lived the perfect life, who took our sin upon Him, and then He rose from the dead. So when we trust that Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the dead to pay for our sins, then we get to have eternal life, so that when we die, we don't stay in the grave, we don't go to hell, we end up going to heaven to be with the Lord forever. And then we're going to have a new body, and so, 
Now, downtown Jalen Brown may not need a new body, may, you know, in this world because he can do all these great things. In basketball, I'm not as tall as you. I played a lot when I was a kid. I shot free throws and I did the best I could, but I didn't have, I'm sure I didn't play as much as Jalen Brown did, and I don't have the heights and the, the talent that he does uh, in addition to not practicing as much. So he may not feel like he needs a new body, but when it comes to heaven and the spiritual realm, we all need one. And so we get that new body. It's a glorified body. We can disappear and reappear somewhere else. We can travel different dimensions. We can do all sorts of things um, in that new body. And it's all because Jesus conquered it for us. So don't worry. You know, you can try a lot in basketball and you can try to do good in this world and you can succeed. But when it comes to the spiritual, no matter how hard you try, you can't do it. And that's why God sent His Son, Jesus. He died for our sins. And when you believe that, He gives you the gift of eternal life when you die. So, happy birthday, downtown Jalen Brown. And if you believe that, uh, that Jesus died for your sins, then you get to have a new birthday. You get to have a new body in, in heaven when you die. All right.